honor and remember Lorenzen Wright. Lorenzen's funeral was a, almost an, a state affair here in Memphis. It was held at FedEx Forum, a place where he once played basketball as an NBA player. And now it was where thousands of people came out to mourn the loss of their hometown hero. They put together a, a beautiful ceremony. His pledge brothers, we were all pallbearers for, for, the, for the funeral. I was uh, asked to do the eulogy. His smile was infectious, his work ethic unmatched, his generosity prolific, and his commitment unswervering. The thing that I remember the most about the funeral is Shara hugging me and saying thank you for such a beautiful eulogy. Wren would have loved that. It was such a tragic situation, seeing his kids suffer like that, knowing they'll never see their father again. This tragic moment, that funeral, it morphs into this, you know, who done it? Because no one knew who did it. At the beginning of a case, you have to remain objective and you have to let the evidence lead you. You have to prepare yourself to be surprised sometimes. This is now essentially a cold case because nine days have passed, a body has been in sweltering heat, which degrades evidence tremendously. The killers had a nine-day head start on us. There were no witnesses, so this was not an easy case at all. Because in these kinds of things, you know, the spouse is always a suspect. They're looking at Shara hard. My number one suspect was the person that I hear everybody else talking about, was Shara. You were suspicious of Shara at this point? Yes. OK, did you tell the police? Yes. What did they say to you? We got to investigate. We got to investigate. We thought she was being forthcoming with information, and in the midst of that, she chose to lawyer up. Lawyering up may not look good, but it doesn't mean she had anything to do with the man's murder. You need evidence if you're going to arrest someone. And so far, there is no evidence that points to Shara. And she denies involvement on a local interview. If I knew who did this to Lorenza, you would know who did this to Lorenza. When Shara was not arrested, like, well, maybe she didn't do it. They started thinking about, well, OK, what about the drug thing? You know, maybe that went wrong some kind of way. They were absolutely looking for guys who had come into Memphis, hit men, to kill Lorenzen. And that just didn't make any sense at all. If a guy owes you a lot of money, what point is it killing him? You'll never get your money back by killing him. We did look into it. I mean, if the ex-wife is telling us this, we have to investigate. What was your interaction like with the police? I was on them. How often did you go down there? Every day. Every day, saying, I want you guys to get on this and find his killer. And this person did this, and check this person out, and this person out. It was say, mama bears take care of their cubs. She was relentless in her pursuit of justice for him. Not to let her son's life and legacy just go down the drain. I mean, that's a mother's love for their child. Deborah Marion says she'll keep fighting until her son's killers are held accountable. I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to give up. Every anniversary of his murder, she did a candlelight vigil. Deborah Marion says the vigil is for family, friends, and the public to come together and remember Lorenzen. Every birthday, she would release balloons at his grave site. My son ain't did nothing to nobody to be murdered. But all of Deborah's efforts aren't making any difference. For years, the police don't arrest anyone, and Shara seems to have moved on with her life. After his death, she became more involved in the church that she had already been a part of and did actually become a pastor in that church. To me, of course, my own prejudice admitted she was no preacher. Her lifestyle had not changed, and she was just always after the money. The people who want to accuse Cher of being involved in Lorenzen's murder point to the fact that she did receive a million-dollar payout from his life insurance policy. Cher ended up in a long, protracted legal battle with Lorenzen's father, Herb, and he claimed that she was spending money on extravagant items and not on the children. I didn't work at the time we separated. She was buying fancy cars, and it got pretty dirty. You know, it was it, all of them in court, you know, fighting over the money. That's common for family members to fight over proceeds and, and, and to end up in court. So that didn't have uh, any significant impact on the case.
But an investigator never knows when something odd will come up. And in this case, something odd and unexpected does come up. Shara writes a book. Cheap dime store novel type of book that is very curious, has a lot of clues about you know what happened. The book is called Mr. Tell Me Anything. It's the story of a woman who has a tumultuous marriage with an NBA player. It's supposed to be fictitious, but it doesn't seem that way. It's almost like a confession that falls short of fully confessing, and she wants publicity. So I interviewed her in July of 2015 for about an hour and a half. Sure, I'm going to need you to speak up because I'm worried about the background noise. Commercial appeal reporter Mark Paraskia conducts an extensive interview with Shara at a restaurant called J. Alexander's. It's a busy, trendy restaurant chain in Memphis. Let me ask you this, Shara. The book, why did you write it? What are you hoping to accomplish? A marriage, I mean, you go through your ups and downs. I just believe that when the downs become more overwhelming and there's more downs than ups, then that's the time to um, kind of go back in and see which one outweighs um, the other. In the interview, Shara explains that the NBA player depicted in the book is abusive, not just verbally, but physically. And she claims the character is based on Lorenzen. Lorenzen had a problem with keeping his hands to himself. Uh, well, Mr. Tell Me Anything, this character did. Uh, and I, I grew him from Lorenzen, like I produced him from experiences with Lorenzo, and so, um, yeah, he had a problem with that. You're planning a sequel, too, right? Is, if, I, if I read that right? <laughs> yeah. It's, when, uh, when is that coming out? It's 90% done. It's going to take you all the way up to Mr. Tell Me Anything's death, and just a little bit past it. Is Mr., I mean, I don't want to give away your book, but does, does Mr. Tell Me Anything murdered? Oh, yes, he is. That was a kind of chilling moment in the recording. But see, it gives Paraskia an invitation to ask about the real life circumstances surrounding Lorenzen's death. Any idea who, who, who did this or? I don't know. She missed her husband. She wanted them to find her, the killers, and that there's no reason for anybody to suspect her. Did you have anything to do with his murder or his disappearance? I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm an author and the police should find his killer. For my name to be even in the same sentence or something like that, I'm a minister of the Lord, and I've never been in any type of trouble or anything. I, I just, I, I'm a mother, an author, and a wife. She just flat denies it. To me, she had the, the, you know, was very convincing. But Shara would soon appear very convincing to another reporter who comes to do a story on her. His name is Kelvin Cowens, and he's about to commit a cardinal sin for a professional journalist. Now, so she's tall, she's beautiful, I'm in trouble. We started dating immediately. Kelvin Cowens may believe he's found true love, just as a Memphis dive team finds something critical at the bottom of this lake. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.